You almost wonder if Jan is, you know, slowing down, but this is a question mark here. Like you wonder if Peter is uh, is gonna be 100%. David Sinfrigueiro, he's had a great road, man. He's had a road that's been that's been like this. I'm 37 too. Are we over the hill? Forgive me, God award. I'm gonna. This is all my producer, Dylan Rush, aka Silly Dilly. You know. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Teletape. I'm your host, Henry Cejudo, a.k.a. Triple C. And on this episode of Teletape, I'm going to be breaking down Peter Yan at number three versus the God of War, Davis Figueredo at number five. Guys, this episode wouldn't be possible without our sponsor. That's right, I'm talking about Hidden Move, man. You know what, just courtesy of Uncle Mike Tyson, I gave them one, he threw all his damn haggers away. It's scientifically proven at Virginia Tech. So you guys make sure to go to hiddenmove.com and get your headgear on. Well, here we have it, guys. Peter Yan, 17 and five versus Davis and Figueredo, 24, 24, three and one. Damn, these dudes have, these dudes, these dudes are experienced, man. I like this fight. I like this fight because it's super competitive, man. Like these guys are, obviously Davis and Figueredo has more of the experience, but he's also, he's had a lot of success recently going up a weight division. You know, seven KOs for Peter Young, nine decisions, one submissions, two, a guy like Davis Figueredo, nine KOs, six decisions, and check this out. This is where I feel like the difference is. You know what I'm saying? Six, uh, Davis Figueredo is a finisher. You know, two inch, two inch height advantage, or is it really? I really don't think so. Um, advantage on the reach two for the God of War. Age 31 to age 36, dude. We forget, dude. Jan, Jan is still young, dude, at age 31. I mean, he's he's he may be creeping up into his prime, but because he has been in so many fights, you almost wonder if uh if Jan is you know slowing down, but I don't I don't think so, man. I think he's he's gotten better with the grappling. But speaking about Peter Young, what are his strengths? Man, I tell you what, dude, that fight with Corey Sanhagen. The fact that he was able to just, you know, prevail and win in that, you know, particularly in, the, in those later rounds, says a lot about Peter Yan. The way that he exchanged in that fifth, to be able to back uh, San Hagen, uh, to be able to back him up, and then to eventually beat him, it was all inside fighting, and and, and um, Corey San Hagen had no answers going backwards. And the other thing too, he does his his takedown, his. Uh, I don't know about great. I don't want to necessarily say great, but his takedown defense is there. You know, he's uh, he's gotten better in those positions. I mean, obviously he he did get taken down by Alja, but it also took him a minute to be able to get taken down. You know, so the the, the takedown defense, and I'm sure he's worked in dag uh, with Russians that are actually teaching him the proper stuff, so he could come out a little heavier. And his ability to fight out of both stance. He's a righty. He's a lefty. You know, he, he's giving both feels. And that's one thing that makes Peter Jan. It's like, when you, if you do train for a guy like Peter Jan, you do need a couple training partners. You need somebody that's gonna be able to switch back and forth from lefty to righty because his lefty is just as good as his right. And that is a gift because if you kick his leg out, he's switching and it's like nothing ever happened. He may be hurt, but his ability to do that also, you know, makes him special. And now see, I gotta talk about his sneaky trips. You know, a lot of people aren't talking about his sneaky trips. He did, he did the same thing that John Jones, that John Jones did to Stipe, and he's done it to a lot of people. You know, he's done it to a lot of people. He's very sneaky with it. Also, Zabib is also very well recognized. I do believe that that is a great takedown for him. So, Davidson Figueredo is going to have to watch out because Davidson Figueredo does have that white stance, and if he's not careful, he's going to get tripped too. A lot of momentum on that lead leg for Davidson. But let's talk about his weaknesses. I mean, he's coming off of a, he's coming off of an ACL and meniscus uh, injuries. You know, he's, uh, you know, he tore his ACL and then meniscus. I mean, I've never had any like, I never had any knee problems, but you need your knee, man, to walk, to kick, to knee, to pivot. I mean, you wonder if he's hundred and ten percent. Another thing too, man, he tends to start off slow too. You know, Peter Young's the type of guy that, other than Marab, 
other than Marab, I think that's the only fight where Peter really didn't look like Peter Yamba with the rest of the guys. Like he's able to really, he's able to really kind of understand his threshold and he'll read people and then he'll start to make decisions. But because of his stance though too, you know, he'll do this a lot. Boom, David Segredo does go to the body. And he will, and he will run things up the middle. His uppercut, and he has stopped, he stopped John Moraga with the body shot. I mean, this dude is really, really good. So the more that this is going on, Davis is gonna more likely gonna probably dig to the body or possibly even kick him. And then you wonder if his conditioning is because of the long layoff, it's if it's uh if it could potentially, you know, and particularly with the injury and then the and then the longer layoff, I believe his last fight was against Soggy Don. This is a question mark here. Like you wonder if Peter is uh is gonna be 100 percent And particularly he's going, I mean, he's he's a I will say this, he is accustomed to traveling abroad. And I wonder how much time he spent in China because the air is different, the time is different. Um, those are questions that I have both for Peter. And a guy like Davis and Figueredo. But without further ado, let's talk about the God of War. What are his strengths? He's a knockout artist, dude. For 125 pounds, he's a finisher more than anything. But he does have that knockout power, dude. Like he'll light for a flyweight, dude. I think he's one of the flyweights, top three at least, or maybe even top two, with the most power in the hand to literally put people out. And that says a lot. And also, man, his he's he's a submission threat on top of that. Like he'll go, he'll jump guillotine, you know, like the way that he called uh, like the the way that he caught Alex too. Like he'll jump guillotine because he believes in his jujitsu that much. I mean, he relies heavy on it, and that makes somebody dangerous. And obviously, he's he's. He's gotten so much better, not just kick, not just elite kickboxing, but also Davidson is different because he has a karate kind of base, taekwondo, so he, he mixes a lot of kicks. So a lot of people in kickboxing, like you have to really understand that range of, uh, of MMA. And I, I feel like now Davis has really understanding where he's not just kicking and in the fight, but he's, he's not too far if it was taekwondo karate, but he's just right. And not just that, man. Davidson Figueroa, he's had a great road, man. He's had a road that's been that's been like this, you know, fighting Rob Font first, uh, fighting uh, and fighting Rob Font, fighting uh, Cody Garbrandt, and then fighting Cheeto. I mean, if you look at the fights that you would want to get to the title, he's one fight away from fighting for the title. It's a it's a perfect way for a guy like Davidson Figueroa to keep that momentum going because I do believe that. This fight with Jan is actually a really good matchup. But let's talk about his weaknesses. Forgive me, God. Uh, forgive me, God. Award. I'm gonna. This is all my producer, Dylan Rush, aka Silly Dilly. You know, Davis and Figueroa. What are his weaknesses? Sometimes he's a little stubborn. I've told him this, dude. Like when I had a chance to really coach him against a guy like Brandon Moreno. He's too much into the pocket, man. And, and, and not just him, but all the Brazilians. They're so technical and they just choose to fight. I don't understand it. I think of a guy like Moicano, and I told this to Moicano, I was like, dude, you're so technical and you decide to fight. I, I, I think the fight nerds too are now kind of, you know, they're being more competitors and fighters, but they still fight, you know? But other than that, I think Davidson will stay in the pocket a little too much and he's, his head's a little aligned. And that's sometimes that's scary against a guy like Jan who likes to get his head across when he actually throws. But because of his stance too, he's also, he could also kick him, dude. You know, I've talked to, I've talked to Davidson about it. I was like, hey man, you can have that stance, but be a little further away. You know, if, if, you're, if your leg is too out there, it could get chewed up. So he's gonna have to make a better job of really recognizing that distance. And again, because he falls, because, because he, it's almost like a gift and a curse because he focuses so much on power that sometimes he could, you know, the, the gas tank, he will empty the gas tank because it's a lot of, ah, a lot of these different motions. He's gonna have to be careful with the gas, very durable, like Yon. And I don't know, this is on my producer. I'm 37 too. Are we over the hill? Are we over the hill? I'm 37, man. So this is a question mark here, but I don't think so, man. I think I think the fact that Davidson went up, I think it changed everything. I think it changed everything for him.
And I feel like he's really found that weight class where he's been really able to make a lot of different uh, moves and he's felt really, really good. So I believe age is just a damn number. But here we have it. <sighs> Strike slanted per minute. Because you know why? Because this guy just focused on those one hitter quitters. And it's not wrong because it's MMA, but you also have to invest in other things against a guy like this that's gonna keep his hands here. So maybe then some of that power could go to the damn body. Like again, like he stopped a lot of people. Davis Figueroa's lead hand is so dangerous just as it's right. Strikes absorb per minute, obviously because he throws less. You know, he doesn't, he's, he's, he's also mechanical too. And look at this, this actually surprises me. Takedown accuracy, do you guys know this? I feel like, I feel like Davis has got more takedowns. You know what I'm saying? But according to the stats, it looks like Peter Jan has more of the accuracy. And then takedown defense. 85%, dude, that's, pretty, that's actually pretty good for a guy like Peter Jan that comes from, you know, from the striking department from that. And that says a lot, I man. That's a dangerous fighter because you're really going to have to make this dude uh, wrestle or do something because he's really good on his feet. Submission average. And I feel like this right here, to me, this right here is the convincing thing of why I got to go with the, with the God of War. Is because there's there's two things that the God of War has. He has power in his hands, but he also has submission threats. You know what I'm saying? And I tell you what, man, Fig's been able to take everybody down. Uh, he's been able to take everybody down, and his back take too is absolutely ridiculous, man. So I gotta go for Figgy. The momentum is going. I do believe that this is a really good matchup. I do believe that the winner of this fight is more likely to get the next title shot after Rob and Umar go at it. And this is it, man. I do believe that the God of War, he's 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 on it. He knows that this is this is it. You know, he's more he's more in now, knowing that you know that he's closer to the title. And I do feel that Davis Davis Figueroa will come in with the takedowns take the back, and then do X, Y, and Z, because I know he respects this dude's stand-up. So for that reason, I gotta go with the God of War. Let me put a, let me put an arrow here. You know, because this dude, this dude's from the Amazon. I, I'm still yet to go to where he's from, but I became really good friends with him. Probably again, I'm gonna call him this week, it's just, just to check up on him. But you guys, thank you guys for watching. Again, guys, this episode wouldn't be possible without our sponsor, that's right. I'm talking about Hit and Move, the scientific headgear that was proven at Virginia Tech, made by a boxer. And again, guys, this, this headgear is so good. I gave one to Mike Tyson. He uses for his whole damn uh, training camp. And again, guys, if you don't like to use headgear, this is your headgear because it didn't feel like you have something on and it doesn't even move. So you guys make sure to go to hiddenmove.com and protect yourself at all time. Till next time, Triple C is out.